Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. Yes. As for this video, we're gonna test Ray Regeneration from AMD, the latest update of FSR Redstone, which is actually the latest and the first update on FSR Redstone that was supposed to be released entirely, I would say, in the second half of 2025. And here we are um, in the 17th of November and we only got a beta Ray Regeneration. Now, one thing that I want to show you before going into Call of Duty, into Call of Duty, into Call of Duty, <laughs> into Call of Duty sorry, uh, is that the version that we have in terms of Ray Regeneration, which is here in Call of Duty Retail folder that you can see here, AMD Fidelity FX Denoiser, which is Ray Regeneration, is only in the file version 0.9.0.0. So this isn't even the final form of Ray Regeneration. <laughs> And I believe that they are releasing the beta version because they are kind of sandbagging because they thought they would be ready to release FSR Redstone by the end of 2025 and they most likely aren't. So they are kind of releasing some things like the Denoiser, for example, the Ray Regeneration still in beta in order for us to shut up a little bit. Yeah. So again, if you go here to the details, you can see that the file version is 0.9.0.0. .0. And to start with the benchmarking and showing off of the Ray Regeneration. And to start off today's sponsor, I'm first going to show you my dog, Mike. And then we have Nino and Loki. And then we have Riskas. And then we have today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG More. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. And to start with the benchmarking and showing off of the Ray Regeneration, what we have is the training course map. And by the way, let me just start by telling you that this game is so completely messed up that firstly, the single player mode needs you to be online, which is bummers. And the second thing is that as soon as you go into the training course, for example, it still needs you to be online. And it takes ages to load into the training course most times. So it makes no sense as it is the training course. No other players are here. But yeah, in terms of, uh, of the game FPS, I need to say that FSR 4 implementation is also a bit odd. I don't really know about the LSS since I haven't tested it. But FSR 4, for example, we're having around 155 FPS and we're using the RX 9070 non-XT. Now, as soon as I go into the settings, first of all, if I want to use FSR 4 native, we all know that FSR 4 native, basically just using anti-aliasing, FSR 4 as anti-aliasing, we all know that those case scenarios, they do, reduce, they do reduce the performance a bit. As soon as I go to FSR 4 native, we go from 155 to 110, which is a major decrease in performance. I mean, 155 to 110. And of course, it looks much better than TAA, we have less blur and in terms of jagged edges, so basically aliasing, we have it much better with, with FSR4 anti-aliasing for sure, but the FPS goes down a lot. And even if we use the FSR4 quality mode, which in theory should always deliver more performance than native, as the render resolution is only 66%, as soon as we enter the game, Bam, we have 164, 160 something. So basically just a little bit more FPS than native resolution. Again, FSR 4, in this case scenario, 164. And as soon as we go to TAA, on this case, Fidelity FX cars, we go to 151. So the difference is very, very little. Now, where it isn't little is when we enable ray tracing. And ray tracing in this, in this game is another thing that's entirely messed up. So ray tracing is really heavy, especially since we're talking about ray tracing only in terms of reflections. We're not talking about global illumination. We're not talking about ambient occlusion, just reflections, which is even scarier to look at. So 150, and let's now enable ray tracing, and we can enable ray tracing to the maximum, I suppose. So ray tracing, high. And remember, this is only reflections, and we went from 150 to 41. <coughs> Less than one third of the performance. Less than one third. This is just completely insane. 
And again, it's just reflections and it doesn't even look that great. The game is just so poorly optimized that it just, I mean, makes no sense. And even if we, if we go to low, for example, to low ray tracing, we are still hitting one third of the performance that we had, just because we're looking at some ray traced reflections in the water, which makes absolutely no sense. Now, one of the points where FSR really works and gives better performance is in terms of ray tracing performance, since ray tracing will trace all the pixels, all the rays and so on, if you have way less pixels, the performance in terms of ray tracing will be much better. Even though that, that at native FSR 4 quality will just give you a bit more performance, if we use FSR quality, FSR 4 quality, with ray tracing, the performance increases a lot. Let me just show you, for example, in terms of, of high ray tracing, we are still having around 40 FPS, I would say. Yeah, kicked because of inactivity in a... <sighs> Jesus. So 38 FPS, 39 here in this specific scenario. As soon as I go here and I use FSR4 quality mode, bam, we go up to 68 FPS. So in this specific scenario of ray tracing, the performance increase is considerable. We went from 38, 39 to 68 with FSR quality. And in terms of ray tracing, that makes a huge difference. Now, if we go to, let's say, ray tracing reflections to low, apply, with FSR, we're able to get around 90 FPS at 1440p uh, ultra settings or extreme settings. Yes, extreme settings. So yeah, this is basically where FSR 4 is better than native. If we are playing without ray tracing, FSR 4 quality will only deliver a bit more performance, which again is odd, but it is what it is. But with ray tracing, we can go from, let's say, 60 to, I would say, 80, 90, which makes absolute sense. And the quality is pretty decent, to be honest. It is still FSR 4.0.2, but it is pretty decent. Now, where does ray regeneration kicks in? Ray regeneration is basically a denoiser. And when you have, when you have things like, let's say, um, like, let's say, the water reflections and so on, it will create noise, so you need to kind of use the noiser in order to have the best quality that you can get. And when ray regeneration is used basically with upscaling, it will be ray, ray regeneration will be used earlier in the pipeline, meaning that ray regeneration will be used before the upscaling. So when you are upscaling, in this case using FSR4, the base quality because of ray regeneration will already be better. And since the base quality is better, with upscaling, upscaler will also work better. Now look at the pool, for example. You can see that we have the waves, right? And this is using the game's default denoiser. If you look, for example, there, you can see that there's a lot of noise there, where I'm pointing at, where the crosshair is, the same there. And as soon as I start moving, look, it's like the waves disappear because the denoiser can't really work the depth, the noise, and so on. So it basically seems like we have no waves whatsoever. It's just a static image. As soon as I stop, we can see the waves again. It doesn't look great, especially since we're losing a lot of performance. But as soon as we go and we use ray regeneration, and let's just see the performance, we're having around 88 FPS. We go for ray regeneration, and the performance that we have, 88. So exactly the same performance. We didn't lose any performance whatsoever. But now look at there. We don't really have noise. We still have a, a little bit of ghosting, I would say, and some odd particles appearing, but at least we don't really have that odd pixelation or that, that odd noise that we had before. It's much, much improved. And for example, as we look here, you can see the depth or the, or the waves, but as soon as we start moving, you can still see them. Something that wasn't really happening before with a normal games denoiser. With a normal games denoiser, the waves wouldn't be noticeable at all. While moving, it, will, it would just be a fudge. While when looking at it, with ray regeneration, yep, the quality is definitely improved. Less noise and definitely working with much better image fidelity. And of course, the performance is the same. But the performance is the same Again, ray regeneration does the same with FSR because as soon as you disable FSR, ray, regen ray regeneration will take a big toll. So for example, Fidelity FX cause. So we're basically running native resolution. Native resolution here, 
we have 63 FPS. And again, this is the, the native denoiser, 63 FPS. As soon as we enable ray regeneration, we go down to 51. So while using FSR, the performance keeps being the same using ray regeneration or not, meaning that ray regeneration, at least in the beta version, is made to be used with FSR4 as it takes no performance toll whatsoever. But if you look into using FSR ray regeneration without FSR upscaling, this is what happens. You lose a lot of performance. But again, if you use it with FSR4 upscaling, it just it just works correctly and and yeah, the performance impact will be basically null. And now you saw how much better ray regeneration works when compared to the game's inbuilt denoiser. That's a fact and that's a given. It looks much better and so on, but again, you lose a lot of performance and as soon as you disable ray tracing and disable disabling ray tracing will disable ray regeneration as well. Look at the waves without any kind of ray tracing. They just look great when moving around the map. Now, the quality in terms of shadowing, in terms of occlusion, isn't as great. But I mean, no noise whatsoever. Because this is a texture using SSRs, screen space reflections, and look at it. Just looks great. Honestly, it just looks great. So I don't see the point of using ray tracing here. The only thing that you'll notice when going from SSR to ray tracing is this. So since we're using screen space reflections, they are kind of attached to the textures. So when you're doing this, you can see the reflections changing. Look, for example, on the reflection on the right. As soon as I do this, the white color disappears from the water because the screen space reflection is tied to the angle and tied to the texture. So, yep, this happens and this shouldn't happen because just because you look down, the reflection should not disappear. And this is what happens here. If you look this way, it looks great. But as soon as you look down, the reflection is changing and it shouldn't. And if you use ray tracing, especially with ray regeneration, let's go back even with the low settings with ray regeneration. If you do this, so as you, immediately you can see that in terms of depth and so on, it looks much better on the right and on the left because the rays are kind of penetrating and they can see the depth and so on, so on, so on. And as soon as you look down, as you can see, we have a small change in the reflection, but the white reflection is still there from the wall. And the same applies there to the cars, to the depth there it's still the same. That's basically because here we are not using screen space reflection, so they are not attached to the textures per se, and it looks much better. As soon as we go to, to other angles, it still does exactly the same, so it works perfectly well, while SSR screen space reflections don't. But that's basically the only big point of of using ray tracing here, but most COD users, of course, they won't use ray tracing because, because there's no benefit in using ray tracing, especially only in terms of reflections. But yeah, ray regeneration definitely looks much better, still has to improve a lot, and this is why it is still on beta version, and I guess it will improve a lot, but for now it is still pretty raw, and I believe it will still work worse than the LSS ray reconstruction. I mean, NVIDIA is ahead for at least two, three years in terms of ray reconstruction, so I believe definitely it is much better, or at least it is going to be much better. I need to test it in order to see, but yeah, definitely. So that's basically it, guys. There's no real big difference in terms of using ray tracing with ray regeneration besides the denoising capabilities. And this game is just so, so sad that, for example, here, the only reflections that we have are the reflections that we see in the glass. And to be honest, it shouldn't be that heavy. We are only having ray trace reflections, nothing more, and the game is really, really heavy. Now, look at the, the windows there. We have ray regeneration. As soon as we disable ray regeneration, we basically have no difference whatsoever. You look at it, no difference whatsoever. And for example, here in terms of, of quality of the reflections, these reflections should look better with ray regeneration. And if you look at here, we don't really have much noise and the reflections are like these without ray regeneration. As soon as we enable it. Yep, quality wise, 
I don't really see any difference whatsoever. I need to say that in this game you don't really need to use ray regeneration at all and not even ray tracing or I would say especially ray tracing, simply do what you always do, disable ray tracing and enjoy it. Now, if we were talking about something like Cyberpunk 2077, games that really benefit from, from ray tracing and path tracing, that would be a different thing and I would definitely go and advise people to, to just use ray regeneration like I do on the Nvidia side. Games like Alan Wake 2, for example. I want to see ray regeneration in Alan Wake 2 or Cyberpunk 2077 because those games, especially Alan Wake, really, really benefit from ray reconstruction, so they will most likely benefit from ray regeneration. And in terms of performance, Alan Wake 2 gets a massive FPS boost when using ray reconstruction. And that's why ray tracing and path tracing run so well on Nvidia cards on that game. So AMD should really go into it and put ray regeneration in Alan Wake 2 because the performance in terms of path tracing and ray tracing would also improve as well. But for games like these, Black Ops 7, shooters and so on, fast paced games, and especially losing the performance that you lose, yeah, I believe it makes no sense to, to use ray, ray tracing and ray regeneration here. It's nice to have, but it is what it is. So just to wrap up this video, yes, I do believe that ray regeneration is a big improvement and AMD is going on the right direction. It just wasn't implemented in the right game and I believe it, it is still worse than ray reconstruction in terms of quality. But again, they are taking steps in the right direction, but they need to be faster. AMD has been quite slow in the past couple of months and they need to be faster if they want to catch up with Nvidia. But yeah, again, looking better than ever, I would say. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your like, subscribe, whatever, and leave your comment in the comment section, letting me know if you tested ray regeneration, what you think about it, if it is good, if it isn't, uh, what's your opinions on it, and which are the games that you would like to see ray regeneration in. For me, Cyberpunk, Alan Wake 2 are a must, and there are some others that I would like to see RR in, but for now, these two or those two are the ones that I want. And yeah, this is basically the Call of Duty 7 experience, Black Ops 7 experience. You just go into a training ground and then get disconnected, God knows why. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and see you in the next video. Cheers.